The bishop is considered as the high priest of his flock. The life in Christ of his faithful is in some way derived and dependent upon the bishop. For as St. Ignatius of Antioch testifies, without a bishop, there is no local church. Therefore, the bishop who fully receives his priesthood from Christ, is considered as the high priest of the local church. The Chrism Mass is one of the principal expressions of the fullness of the bishop's priesthood and signifies the close unity of the priests with him. During the Mass, which he concelebrates with priests from various sections of the diocese, the bishop consecrates the chrism and blesses the other oils. The Christian liturgy has assimilated this Old Testament usage of anointing kings, priests, and prophets with consecratory oil because the name of Christ, 
whom they prefigured, means the anointed of the Lord. Chrism is a sign. By baptism, Christians are plunged into the paschal mystery of Christ. They die with Him, are buried with Him, and rise with Him. They are sharers in His royal and prophetic priesthood. By confirmation, Christians receive the spiritual anointing of the Spirit who is given to them. By the use of the oil of the sick, to which St. James is a witness, those who are sick receive a remedy for the illness of mind and body, so that they may have strength to bear suffering and resist evil and obtain the forgiveness of sins. Today, we are also happy for the presence and for the participation in this chrism mass of the following families. Police Colonel Kirby John and Annalie Kraft, who will carry and present the balsam. Rodrigo and Sir Linda Lozada, who will carry and present the oil for the Holy Chrism. Demetrio and Melody Diamola, who will carry and present the oil of the sick. Police Major Jack Tilkab and personnel, who will carry and present the oil of the catechumens. And Pedro and Geraldine Calzada, who will carry and present the bread and wine for the Eucharistic sacrifice. As the assembled faithful of the Archdiocese of Davao, let us unite ourselves in prayer as we offer this holy sacrifice of the Mass. Let us all stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. 
brothers and sisters, brother priests, it is always wonderful to celebrate together with you this unique form of the Eucharist that we call the Christian Mass. <clears throat> Let us then prepare for this holy celebration by recalling to mind our sins. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for me to the, the Lord, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that, being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and the day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord. Ministers of our God shall you be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as the race the Lord has blessed. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing the goodness 
reading from the book of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priest for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise for the proclamation of the Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us all be seated and listen to the homily. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, brother priests, Bishop George Remando, we know very well that the scheduled Christian Mass is 
a bit unusual, very far from Holy Thursday of Holy Week, or far from Holy Week. That was done last year, and this year we are allowed by, by the Vatican, by the Holy See, by the Holy Father to do the same. And we know the reason because of this ongoing, more than a year now, ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Last year, we did it exactly one year ago uh, for a limited number uh, at the St. Francis Xavier College Seminary Chapel, a beautiful chapel. If you have a chance sometime after the pandemic to see the chapel there, and that was one year ago. Then we have moved it in the usual place in this cathedral. It is shown now, this mass live stream, uh, those who are watching do not be, do not be, uh, let's say, commenting that only few priests are, 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 are present, not many. Of course, understandable, uh, there's still very much anxiety. Uh, we're trying to be extra careful because of the current ongoing pandemic. I was, uh, I was even uh, told by a friend from Manila, a, a doctor, a schoolmate in, in high school, uh, she said, Archbishop, double mask, kumahimo, triple mask, and face shield. Oy, inday, oy, kalimut ka, magwali, kung saan ako pagwali, o double mask, o triple mask, o face shield. But I think he was, she was half joking because of the situation. And I would continue making these remarks that uh, we are really in extraordinary, miserable, global situation. When I say global, because in many, the pandemic already is really global, wreaking havoc and misery and suffering among peoples in the whole uh, world. We know that, but as if we do not have enough suffering, uh, not much in the news, but we know, I, because it's far from us, thousands, millions, are, millions uh, are suffering in Haiti because of the big earthquake there. I think, if I'm, my memory is correct, more than a thousand perished in the earthquake. And of course, they're still suffering in Haiti now, but that's not in the news. But before Haiti, still ongoing, the terrible misery and suffering in Myanmar today, but not in the news anymore because of the internal strife uh, in, in Myanmar. Uh, we, we have lost count on how many already killed in the conflict Myanmar. Now, on top of that, in the news, the current news, uh, YouTube, uh, FB, and, uh, uh, TV, uh, the chaos in Afghanistan. So it's, it's pait ng panahon. And to think, we think we are poor, but the situation, yes, no denying about that, we are difficulty. But to think of people of Haiti, I think I'm quoting they're poorer than us. To think of Myanmar, not, not to put them down, but they're very poor, struggling. Afghanistan, struggling. So at the outset, when we gather today, we don't only think of our difficulty, our darkness, here in Davao, but I'm sure we think of Mindanao, we think of, of the whole Philippines, huh? but we think also of the whole world. But we gather, this little gathering today, we gather in faith, with faith, believing that grace, the grace of the Lord is working. When we gathered last year, August 28, 
feast, also beautiful feast of St. Augustine. Vaccines were still talked about. There were coming, but no schedule as of yet. It was just a hope and a prayer. By December, I think, it was definite announced that vaccines are being produced. And we in the Philippines, I tried to back you read the information. I think it was only in March that we started receiving vaccines. And that's one particular light, something that we thank the Lord for in this whole tragic situation. That is why the Holy Father, this is just a backgrounder, recently, August 18, made a wonderful statement the Holy Father said uh, to be vaccinated, Holy Father himself, to be vaccinated is an act of love, he says. And then, gidublihan pa niya, ingun siya, to work for the vaccination of many using authorized vaccines is an act of love. As an aside, Today, Father, Father Bong Dublan, our social action director, he said, Archbishop, very sorry I could not come. I would have come for the Christmas, but I am in Mandog, uh, Parokya, uh, in Mandog. We have a Paris based vaccination program now, vaccination going on in, in, in Mandog. We are clinging to that particular thing that we could do to show love and charity in these difficult times. We, Takantakaron, this special mass for priests, should give following the Holy Father a good example for this particular thing that we could do on encouraging our people to get vaccinated as an act of love. I'm just very little thing, very happy it was planned. When I had my first dose in SM Lanang, no planning, I found out that the day before, we were living in the same house, but no pressure. But I found out that Bishop George said, we will, I will go also on that day, Bishop George. Lo and behold, in Pagpila na sa Lanang, lo and behold, I was touched. We were together, no, no planning. Archbishop Kapalya was there, the three bishops in Davao, together. What a beautiful witness. We were vaccinated. But in fact, also, when we were, uh, we, were get, we, got, we got our second dose, the same, but medyo wala kay nagdungan. Archbishop Kapalya was was already getting out when Bishop George and myself got our second dose. And so, it is with this context that I think it's, it's very important to keep our faith and to see particularly our ministry in that, in that faith, in that being church, as extremely important and valuable and grace in this difficult situation. Now, we are celebrating this traditional Christmas. Mass. I have, I have been with you many times, but I would like to continue by saying one way of describing the Christmas Mass is a Mass of priests among priests. A mass, everybody in that mass, uh, everyone, a portion, a mass of priests among priests. Because the one of the oils, in fact, it, the word for that oil to be blessed is not blessed, but one of those, the chrism, will be not blessed, but you, priests, you understand, the term is consecrated. And that oil in, in this mass that I called mass 
of priests among priests, that oil of Christian is used every time one is baptized. And each one of us, we bishops, priests, and lay here and religious common gift, the gift of baptism. Priests also, when you are baptized. That's why in the in the second reading, in the second reading, I'm surprised to see the second reading today. It says, if I can read it well, uh, Book of Revelation. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father. We're all priests. All priests, including the lay faithful because of baptism. And the oil of chrism reminds us of that. But the same oil of chrism, especially is unwented into the hands of priests, into the crown, the head of bishops, when they are made priests for the priests among us. Very important reminder. But what so we can think of Christian Mass, of course, without bishops and priests, yes, but we can never imagine a Christian Mass with our people. This is certainly with our people because we are priests, the other sexual priests, for the priests in the church. Now, my dear brothers, priests, a feature of this Mass this morning, you know very well, the Wakapi, is the renewal of our priestly promises. And let me read slowly again a description of our ministry as priests to those priests in the church from the book of the prophet Isaiah, even quoted by Jesus in today's gospel reading. But I'd rather read what Isaiah said as a product as a consequence when you are anointed for the priest, anointed for the people. Isaiah says, Because the Lord has anointed me, He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, lowly, glad tidings to the lowly, no wonder Pope Francis and the other popes constantly emphasizes, but in the words of Francis, go to the periphery, go to those not only in the margins, but beyond the margins, to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. Wonderful and powerful words of Isaiah to describe the role of us priests among the priests in the church. And today, 
we will renew our promise to do exactly that. The other thing coming from the gospel, and I think very striking, the gospel scene is familiar to us, very familiar to us. He went back to his own small town, to his barangay, in their chapel, in the synagogue, and he opened the scroll, and he read the scroll that I quoted from Isaiah, Old Testament text. But to me, for this year's Christmas, what is striking is this, two things, double. Huh? They were amazed at his words, okay lang na, wow. But secondly, the preacher himself, Jesus said, Today, the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. As we renew our promise, our promises of priestly service today, I think the gospel for this year's reflection is reminding us the fundamental and extreme importance of conveying the word to the lowly ones, to our people, the word of God. But that can be done with wonderful words, wonderful lecture, wonderful homily perhaps, but today's gospel reading is challenging us, me, all of us, priests among a priestly people, to have in our aura, in our hearts, bisag din lang isulti, but in the way we stand amidst our people, this thing that our people can sense, that without saying it, but we are saying it, today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. Sa YouTube, na may mga, sana vlog ba na, o mga kwan nila nga, ay ang wali, katawanan kayo, katawanan, katawanan kayo, nakasabot ko wali, ano, Pero papakwa na kaagi o wali ko, nakapalibot sa palibo ang wali that di na nakasabot but my mind and heart could feel that these words are being fulfilled today in our midst. Because the preacher is not only knowledgeable but the preacher has Jesus now, my part, but I'm also preaching to myself at this moment that the preacher, the conveyor of the word of God, has Jesus of Nazareth in his person. Adire in persona Christi, as the council would tell us. So today, it is an occasion, a liturgy, for and of priests among priests. Pope Francis, and I'm, and I'm closing now, has a beautiful portion of his uh, apostolic letter, Patris Corde, to wrap this up in the context of the pandemic. They are familiar with this part of Pope Francis. Now I'm closing, but I'll read it. We experience amidst the crisis, meaning the crisis we are facing today, we experience amid the crisis how our lives are woven together and sustained by ordinary people, often overlooked 
People who do not appear in newspaper and magazine headlines or on the latest television show. Yet, in these very days, are surely shaping the decisive events of our history. Doctors, nurses, storekeepers, and supermarket workers, cleaning personnel, caregivers, transport workers, men and women working to provide essential services and public safety are men and women in uniform, day in and day out, rain or shine, mga nasa kapulisan and related services, maintaining public safety, volunteers, priests, men and women religious, and so very many others. They understood that no one is saved alone. How many people daily exercise patience and offer hope, taking care to spread, not panic. I'm distressed by reports and seeing a good number of them of this Facebook, but I don't Facebook, but uh, uh, YouTube clips. Very irresponsible, to say the least, during the pandemic. So, not spreading panic, hmm, but shared responsibility. How many fathers, mothers, grandparents, and teachers are sharing, are showing our children in small, everyday ways how to accept and deal with a crisis by adjusting their routines, looking ahead, and encouraging the practice of prayer. How many are praying? making sacrifices and interceding for the good of all. I think the words of the Holy Father are words that describe us together, priests, religious, every sector of society, but silently, patiently, bringing, comforting, as it were using the imagery of today's liturgy, the oil of strength, the oil of encouragement, the oil of healing and comfort. Because this is our treasure. In this time of darkness and death, we know that we have the Lord who loves us, always present and accompanying us. Brothers and sisters, we shall now witness the renewal of commitment of priestly service. We now ask the priests to please stand. Beloved brothers, on the anniversary of the day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles, and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves 
and conforming those promises about sacred duties, duties towards Christ's church, which, prompted by love of Him, you willingly and joyfully pledge on the day of your priestly ordination? Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ, the Head and Shepherd, not seeking any gain but moved only by zeal for souls? Please all stand. As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out His gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ, the High Priest, so that they may lead you to Him who is the source of salvation. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. And please pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my loneliness and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. May the Lord keep us all in His charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Let us give our priests who have just made their renewal of commitment to priestly service a warm round of applause. Please remain standing for the prayers of the faithful. Christ has made us into a kingdom of priests, a holy nation for his God and Father. Let us now pray for the Father, to the Father, for the graces that we need and say, Father, graciously hear us. Father, graciously hear us. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and the Archbishop of Davao, Romulo G. Valles, that the Spirit of the Lord be always with them as they fulfill their apostolic office. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father graciously hear us. For all priests, that in the modesty of their lives, they may always rediscover the wonders of their noble and exalted priestly calling. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, graciously hear us. For the community of believers, may generously pray for all ordained ministers, that they may forever be faithful ministers of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, graciously hear us. For the young people of today, that they may courageously respond to the call of priestly and consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, graciously hear us. For the sick, prisoners, the poor, the victims of pandemic and various calamities, that they may never lose hope and always call unto God amidst their difficulties. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, graciously hear us. For the souls of our beloved dead, that they may enjoy the everlasting joy in the Father's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father graciously hear us. Almighty Father, hear the prayers of the people you gathered before your altar and made in your and made in one faith and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
the oils to be blessed and consecrated will now be brought and presented to the Archbishop together with the other gifts for the Eucharistic celebration. Balsam. The oil for the holy cuisine. the sea. The oil of the catechumens.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the New and Eternal Covenant, and by a wondrous design, were pleased to decree that His one priesthood should continue in the Church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people He has made His own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption to set before you, children, the Paschal, your children, the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the, the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Peter, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. In the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Romulo our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people who have ga you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. The oil of the sick will now be blessed. God of all consolation, you chose and sent your Son to heal the world. Graciously listen to our prayer of faith. Send the power of your Holy Spirit, the Consoler, into this precious oil, this soothing ointment, this rich gift, this fruit of the earth, Bless this oil and sanctify it for our use. Make this oil a remedy for all 
who are anointed with it, heal them in body, in soul, and in spirit, and deliver them from every affliction. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please remain standing for the blessing of the oil of catechumens and for the consecration of the chrism. The blessing of the oil of catechumens. Lord God, protector of all who believe in you, bless this oil and give wisdom and strength to all who are anointed with it in preparation for the baptism. Bring them to a deeper understanding of the gospel. Help them to accept the challenge of Christian living and lead them to the joy of new birth in the family of your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Consecration of the Chrism. Let us pray that God, our Almighty Father, will bless this oil so that all who are anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in the eternal salvation. God, our Maker, source of all growth in holiness, accept the joyful thanks, thanks and praise we offer in the name of your Church. In the beginning, at your command, the earth produced fruit-bearing trees, 
from the fruit of the olive tree, you have provided us with oil for holy chrism. The prophet David sung of the life and joy of the oil would, that the oil would bring us in the sacraments of your love. After the avenging flood, the dove returning to Noah with an olive branch announced your gift of peace. This was a sign of a greater gift to come. Now the waters of baptism wash away the sins of men, and by the anointing with olive oil, you make us radiant with your joy. At your command, Aaron was washed with water, and your servant Moses, his brother, anointed him priest. This too foreshadowed greater things to come. After your son Jesus Christ our Lord asked John for baptism in the waters of the Jordan, you sent the Spirit upon him in the form of a dove, and by the witness of your own voice, you declared him to be your only well-beloved son. In this, you clearly fulfilled the prophecy of David that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness beyond his fellow men. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this oil you have created, fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit, through Christ your Son. It is from Him that Chrism takes His name. And with Chrism, you have anointed for yourself priests and kings, prophets and martyrs. Make this Chrism a sign of life and salvation for those who are to be born again in the waters of baptism. Wash away the evil they have inherited from sinful Adam, and when they are anointed with this holy oil, make them temples of your glory, radiant with the goodness of life that has its source in you. Through this sign of chrism, grant them royal, priestly, and prophetic honor and clothe them with incorruption. Let this, let this be indeed the chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. May they come to share eternal life in the glory of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please remain standing for the final blessing. Before the final blessing, bear with me a few moments. A few notes I'd like to to say. Uh, thank you again 
brothers and sisters, especially by the priest, for coming. This is important. We need sacraments and sacramental, powerful signs and symbols, words of the liturgy. We did this for our spirit, for our soul, for our strength. And we thank people who made this liturgy beautiful. We thank our Monsieur Jimmy and team who silently prepared the San Pedro Cathedral staff. Silently, they, they help us prepare for this liturgy with many limitations. We thank last year, the college seminarian sang for us. And they were so beautiful, led by Semir and Amil. And we thought, let them come. They are college seminarians. And maybe this is one way of encouraging them to pursue, to continue their formation in the prison. Our college seminarians. Thank you. Wonderful scene. And a note that I'd like to say here. Uh, it's a wonderful time to give them a particular thank you and appreciation. Our men and women in uniform. It is a wonderful occasion because the, the head of the PNP for the city of Davao, Sir Kraft, is here with his staff, with his men. You have been so gracious to the church, to the cathedral, to all our parishes, and to all our people in these difficult times. The, the men and women of our national police, PNP, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, by requesting you to be part of this beautiful liturgy, I would say beautiful, uh, uh, we are saying also thank you very much, recognizing your work and your sacrifice. And related to that, I'm happy to know, it's good to underline that the chaplains, priests, serving our men and women in uniform, the chaplain of the Coast Guard is here, the chaplain of the... Uh, Bureau of Fire Protection is, is here. Uh, he is, in fact, our very own, our be the chaplain of the Bureau of Fire Protection is a priest of Davao, Father Randy Baloso. Correct, uh, Father Randy is here. And the chaplain of the PNP, he is here. The chaplain of the Army, I'm told he is here. And again, the many sectors of the frontliners, we have to admit and accept that they are part of those doing the daily grind of making us secure and safe. To you all, daghan kayong salamat. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. Father, look with love upon your people, the love which our Lord Jesus Christ showed, showed us when he delivered himself to evil men and suffer the agony of the cross. Grant this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Salvación, a todo el mundo, compartir su compasión.